going back to continuity, we're going to pick up where we left off, and we're going to talk about radical functions, specifically even radical functions. So an even radical, for example, would be the square root of x, or the fourth root of x, or any even root. The way you're going to find continuity for a radical function is you're going to set what's inside of the radical greater than zero. Okay, and that's because a radical function that's an even root has an endpoint. At that point, it's not continuous. Why? Because there's a break. There's a break in the graph. And uh, remember, we talked about the fact that's one-sided discontinuous. Continuous on one side, discontinuous on another. It's going to be discontinuous when the inside of the radical is equal to zero. Okay. For example, at the square root of x, it's discontinuous at zero because at that point, it is uh, that's where the that's where the graph ends. It's an endpoint. It's not continuous there. Now, um, for an for an odd radical, I'm not sure why I don't have this on here, but odd radicals are continuous everywhere. Because if you think about x to the one third or x to the one fifth. Uh, those graphs kind of look like this. It's like a reverse parab uh, reverse x cubed function. There's not going to be a break there because you can plug in any number to an odd radical and get something back. So its domain is all real numbers. There is no break. But anyways, um, let's do an example with an odd radical. So we have the fourth root of negative 3x plus 9. So are you going to do is um, you only have to figure out one or the other. We'll go ahead and figure out where it's discontinuous. So set it less than or equal to zero. That's where it's discontinuous. In fact, you could just set it equal to zero, really, because that's the only point on the, where the, the graph actually exists. Uh, yeah, let's change that. Negative three x plus nine is less than or equal to zero. Thank you for that. So we will add, uh, subtract nine from both sides. And then this is going to change a little bit. Yeah. Yep, since we're dividing by negative 3, we're going to have to flip that middle sign. So it should be x is greater than or equal to negative 3. It's going to be discontinuous. That's correct, or multiply. Okay? Now, that means it's going to be continuous for x is less than negative 3. So notice that continuous and discontinuous are just reversed. Okay? One side is going to be discontinuous, and on the other side it's going to be continuous. Let me see if I have a graph. This is, the, this is not the actual graph, but you can kind of see what an even root function looks like. Uh, notice that it's going to be continuous whenever x is greater than or equal to 0, but at 0, and of course anything less than 0, there is no graph, so it's going to be discontinuous. We can do like a random graph here. And so notice, if you were to set what's inside the radical um, greater than or equal to 0 and solve, you end up dividing by negative, so the sign would flip, but you can see on one side it's continuous, and at x equals negative 1 half, it's going to be discontinuous. Certainly anywhere to the right of that it will be. So it's basically a one-sided graph. That's why we have discontinuous and continuous parts. All right. I'm not going to do a trig function right now because I know you guys need some uh, refresher on that. Um, we will do a piecewise next.